English first. So the first question is, uh, what was it like praying inside the Kaaba? Okay. First question is, you have the Kaaba Sharif in the Kaaba Sharif. How did you pray in the Kaaba Sharif? How did you pray in the Kaaba Sharif? I was in the Kaaba Sharif. Thank you. 
मटेरियल भाई उसको सांप को चक लेंगे उसके बाद उन लोगों ने बतूना चाहिए था दरवाजा खोल करके वो तो पैसे निकाले उसके बाद भी जो है उसकी ताबीर मुकम्मल नहीं हो सकी तो उन्होंने रसना हिस्सा छोड़ दिया था जिसको हसीब के नाम से कहा जाता था वो असल बतूला शरीफ का हिस्सा है और जब मक्का फतह हुआ तो अल्लाह रसूल ने अशर जिंदा और तलाना से कहा कि अभी चूँकि तुम्हारी कौम नई नई इस्लाम में दाखिल हुई है कहीं ऐसा ना हो तो कहेंगे देखो मोहम्मद सल्लम का कब्जा हुआ तो बतूला शरीफ ने अपनी तोड़ को नचा दी इसलिए मैंने मैं छोड़ देता हूँ उन्होंने बतूला शरीफ को इब्राहिम इस्लाम के बुनियाद पर उसको तामीर करता है उसका हिस्सा जो है वो तो बाकी गंती का हिस्सा है तो ये उसकी मैं उसके अंदर दाखिल हुआ और उसमें उन्होंने फरमाया था कि बतूला शरीफ का जो एक दरवाज़ा है उसके मुकाबले दूसरा दरवाज़ा भी मैं कर देता लेकिन इसी बुनियाद पर मैं कर रहा हूँ तो जब अब्दुल्ला में जो है रजील्ला तारा का ज़माना आया मक्के पर उनका तसलत हुआ तो उन्होंने आमदू की ख्वाहिश के मुताबिक बैतुल्ला शरीफ में जो मौजूद दरवाज़ा है उसके सामने दूसरा दरवाज़ा उन्होंने बनाया और हसीम को बैतुल्ला शरीफ में दाखिल कर दिया लेकिन हजार बिन यूसुफ ने उनके जिन में जो है फिर वो हसीम जैसे हसी सारत से बना दिया और बैतुल्ला शरीफ का जो दरवाज़ा उन्होंने सामने रखा था उसको जो है उन्होंने हजार में बंद कर दिया अभी भी जब पर्दा बैतुल्ला शरीफ का उठाया जाए तो आप उसको महसूस करेंगे जैसे जैसे यहाँ एक दरवाज़ा है उसके मुकाबले तो सर इसको बंद करेंगे तो उसकी आरामत मालूम होगी जाहिर होगी कि यहाँ ये जोड़ है तो मैंने उसको गौर से देखा कि वो बिल्कुल ऐसे ही है दरवाज़ा जैसे बदला से इधर दरवाज़ा है उधर दरवाज़ा था उसको बंद किया होगा तो वो मैं इसमें दाखिल हुआ मैंने दुआ की खुदा तला मैं हुआ तो किबला किस तरफ होता है आपके अंदर तो वो तो पूरा ही किबला है ना अहमदा सलम ने जो है नमाज जैसे पढ़ी थी उस एतबार से तो वो किबला जो बतूला शरीफ का जो दरवाज़ा है अभी उसकी तरफ रुक करके आपने नमाज पढ़ी थी यानी उसके उसके बाजू में नेक्स्ट में आपने नमाज पढ़ी थी अजीत में जो बयान किया गया So the the question is about praying inside the Kaaba, and I'll make it brief, as it, uh, it's going to take too long. So the Sheikh said um, he had free time from the university, and this is in the 60s. So he came to Mecca to uh, spend some time there. He made Umrah, and there was a uh, some teacher of his who said uh, you can spend time in my house. He was bored, so he just went to the masjid, and he spent a lot of time there. And he said um, they were cleaning the Kaaba, so the the they were changing the cloth, and he found the door was open. So he just went in. Uh, he found a golden opportunity. He went in, and he said that he had studied this in the books of Hadith before. Uh, the issue of how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed uh, inside the Kaaba. So he said that's all he wanted to do. He went in. He had about ten minutes uh, before they asked him to leave. So based on the descriptions that he uh, learned, um, he prayed. There were uh, two pillars to the left and three to the right, something like that. We asked about the qibla. He said the qibla was towards the door. That's how the Prophet prayed uh, when he prayed inside, and he said he described a little bit of it that there's a, there was green cloth inside. There's not a lot of things there. There's a few markings, and he said there's uh, evidence of a door on the other side. And he spent some time talking about the history of the Kaaba, how it was originally. There were two doors, and it was actually bigger. And we won't get into that history, but um, there's some traces of that inside. So he prayed two nafil, two uh, rakahs, and made dua, and he asked Allah to accept that dua. That's the answer. Okay. Um, the next question is: Ah, your Walid Sahab has written a book called The Shree. In it, what is your opinion? In it, with Walid Sahab's support, the Muslim's desire to be a leader, 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 to be a leader. जितना कुछ भी उसका मसौला होता था वो सब मेरे हाथ का होता था जब मैं घर नहीं था तो वाले साहब ने हाथ से लिखते थे उसके बाद जब मैं घर आ गया तो रिफ्रेस तलाश करना या भी हमारे घर में किताब नहीं है तो किसी दूसरी लाइब्रेरी में शहर के बाहर मतलब पटना है वाराणसी है या दिल्ली है वहाँ या शिवली अकेडमी जो आजमपुर में है वहाँ किताब है तो वहाँ से जा करके उसका हमारा तलाश करना कि ये ये हदीस या ये चीज़ वहाँ किस किताब में मौजूद है फिर ये कि उसका उसका जो पेश किस पेज में है उसका कौन सा एडिशन है सारे चीज़ें थे पता था और मैं वाले साहब के साथ उसके एहम पर कैसे सीखते थे So the question was um, the book that his father wrote, the commentary on Mishkat. 
what was his role in it. So he said basically he was his father's helper. So he was primarily responsible for finding the references from different books and, and books of hadith. So he spent a lot of time with his father. Uh, generally with his own handwriting, he would write the references. And if he had to be away, sometimes his father would work on that. But he was primarily doing uh, referencing, finding hadith, getting quotes from other books, checking things. So he did a lot of work uh, with his father on this commentary. एक सवाल है कि सबसे बेहतरीन किताब हदीस की आम बंदे के लिए शुरू करने के लिए कौन सी होएगी? बुखारी और मुस्लिम तो बहुत वसी हैं। तो आम आदमी के लिए पहली किताब कौन सी होनी चाहिए? मुझे हदीस की जो किताब है, उनका तो सबका हो तो जवान में तर्जमा हो चुका है, लेकिन मैं तर्जमा और तस्वीर जो कम इल्म आती है उसके लिए वो क्या कहते हैं कि जमाने उनसे कार्रवाई कर सकता है अखलाकियात से मतलब मिश्रा शरीफ में उसके मुआविज ने इसका ये तमाम किया है कि उसकी पहली फसल और दूसरी फसल उसमें जो है पहली फसल में सही है यानी बुखारी और मुस्लिम की हदीस मान रखी है दूसरी फसल में So the question was about um, what's a good starting book of hadith for an average person who's not a scholar. Obviously, Bukhari and Muslim are very lengthy and not easy to understand. So uh, the Sheikh said most of the books in Urdu, at least he can comment in Urdu, they're translated, but his, one of his favorite is Mishkat al Masabir, which is what his father worked on. So Mishkat is probably the most popular book of hadith in the East. Um, it's similar to Riyadh al-Salihin in the West, in the Arab world. So he said Mishkat has very good features. Uh, one of the features is organized very well. And there's three portions in every chapter. The first section always has hadith from Bukhari and Muslim. Then the second portion has hadith from the other books like Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi and Nasa'i. And then the third section at the end of the chapter would have statements of companions, and Athar and things like that. So it's an excellent book. And he said there's an Urdu translation that he loves. So it was done by a panel of four scholars. And um, I don't remember the names. But this is a very uh, an excellent edition. Um, it's written very well and it's very good. It's a very practical translation. And it uh, touches light on akhlaqiyat, uh, how to reform our life. So it's a very practical book. So the short answer is Mishkat al masabi <laughs> The other uh, books are like Lu'lu uh, al Marjan by Abdul Baqi is a good selection of hadith from Bukhari and Muslim. Um, and finally, mentioned Bulugh al Maram. You want to look at hadith that have to do with rulings, fiqh, ahkam, then Bulugh al Maram is an excellent one by Ibn Hajar. Also, as it touches on um, practical akhlaq as well. So, these are some of the books. All of them have translation in Urdu and also in English as well, inshallah.
ایک سوال ہے کہ شیخ مفتی ابن باز رحمۃ اللہ تعالیٰ آپ ان کی کلاسوں میں بیٹھے ہیں ان کا اسٹائل پڑھانے کا کیا ساتھ ہے So um, the question was, um, he was one of the first students uh, in the classes of Sheikh Ibn Baz, rahimahullah ta'ala. So what was his style like in teaching? So he said what he remembers is uh, uh, he was blind. Uh, Sheikh Ibn Baz was blind from an early age. But yet um, his knowledge was so vast, people would read books of hadith to him. And it was like he was reading from the book with uh, vision. So he was very well versed. And he had excellent um, you know, lessons on various hadith. He was able to tie in a lot of different evidences and he interacted with the students very well. This is uh, in brief what he remembers of him. So he was, his, he said his mind was like a hadith encyclopedia. So whenever he heard anybody say something uh, against hadith or, or uh, quoting the wrong hadith, he, would immediately, he couldn't hold himself, he would immediately correct that. So he was very passionate about hadith and his knowledge was very vast. آپ کے حساب سے جب آپ طالب علم تھے انڈیا میں آپ کے اندازے میں سب سے بڑا عالم حدیث کا انڈیا میں کون ہے وہ مختلف مقاطع فکر کے لوگ تھے وہ آپ وہاں کیا کہتے ہیں کہ تعلق لیول میں تو مولانا سید السلام صاحب علی رحمۃ اللہ اور شاہ عزیز سے اس کے بعد مولانا So the question was, in your estimation, in your studies, uh, while you were studying in India, who was the greatest scholar of hadith in, you know, in your estimation? He said there's no single person. Every institute has great scholar. So he said one of the great scholars was from uh, the tradition of Dioban, Mawlana Hussain Ahmad Madani. He was a great scholar of hadith. But he doesn't have a lot of written works. But there was another scholar there, Fakhruddin. So he has excellent research on the hadith and he has excellent notes to Sahih of Bukhari. He was a teacher of, of Bukhari. So that's uh, it's currently in, uh, in, in, in publication. It's going to be coming out soon. His father benefited a lot from his lessons and so did he. So there are a number of scholars. Mm-hmm. 
मौना से कबूतरी साहब के लिए किताब जो रोज शायर में है इसके शुरू में हमारे बुखारी हमारे सीरत से मतलब हमारे दादा बाबू मौना तो सरा साहब की पूरी किताब मुकम्मल किताब चार सौ सफ़े की वो उसमें उन्होंने उसके शुरू में लगाया है हमारे बुखारी सीरत से So uh, Sayyid Fakhruddin's book uh, on Bukhari includes in the beginning his own grandfather's uh, biography of Bukhari. The whole uh, biography is included as a portion of that book uh, in the beginning of that book. Dusra sawaal hai Sheikh Nasruddin al-Albani. Unka kaisa style ka padhane ka kya tarzara? Unke zaman. So the question was, um, uh, about Sheikh Nasruddin al-Albani, what was his style and, and some experience from him? He said um, his main focus was on uh, studying or, or determining the authentication of each hadith. So that, that was his specialty and that's what he focused on, uh, looking at the chains of transmitter, the narrators, and determining the, the uh, identification in terms of the authenticity of each hadith. So he's very well versed. He said he found him to have a very uh, expansive knowledge. He was very well read. And he said he spent a lot of time reading uh, in the library of Zahiriya in Damascus, spending a lot of time. And he said he told, uh, he confessed himself to the students that um, this library contains many books that aren't printed. They're in manuscript form. That he, he said he spent, he spent years there and they had a special spot for him because he spent so much time there. And he said that he read all these manuscripts at least four times. Um, so the ones that aren't published. So because of that, his knowledge, particularly in the narrators, at Murrijal, was very vast.
Arabic question is yours? Is there Urdu me like we talk it ya amawa pehne ka koi hadith hai to say is gay but we will ask it to know some of this.
کہ انہوں نے کوشش کی دین کا مسئلہ حج کرنے کی اور اگر خدا خاص ہے اور اگر اللہ کے مرضی کے مطابق اس کے ان کا فتویٰ جو ہے قرآن اور سنت کے مطابق ہوا تو ان کو دوہرا حج ملے گا ایک تو اشتہاد کا دوسرے یہ کہ قرآن اور سنت کے مطابق ان کا حج ہوا پھر سارے انہوں نے کہا کہ ہماری بات جو قرآن سنت کے مطابق ہو اس کو لے لو اگر خدا خاص ہے ہمارا اشتہاد سے کر جاتا ہے تو ہمارے وہاں کچھ ہو تو وہ تو بری ہے ہم جو ہے تعبہ کے لیے آپ کے اور اسی دنیا پر جو ہے ہماری طاقت کمزور ہو رہی ہے اور اس وقت تو بہت بھی سازش چل رہی ہے کہ خاص کر کے ہندوستان میں ہمیں پڑا کہ ایک دوسرے کو سوال کو دوسرے سے لگایا جائے فریب So the question, this was an important question about the differences among the Muslims. Uh, it seems to be increasing. How do we uh, uh, deal with those? So he said, let me just tell you one story. So he said one day they were off from the University of Medina. So they went to the Masjid of the Prophet wasallam. They used to enter from Bab Abu Bakr. And there was a special spot where they used to sit as students and have classes and just uh, have discussions. So he said he found a great scholar there, Sheikh Ab- uh, Abdul Fatah Abu Ghudda. He was a great scholar of hadith, and he was Hanafi, and he was uh, someone from, uh, he was originally from, uh, the, the, the Mishkit, Syria, the Syria. Syria, he was Syrian, yeah. So he was, uh, actually he disagreed with Sheikh Albani a lot, and, uh, but he was a great scholar nonetheless. He was sitting there, and he said he sat down and learned from him, and he said someone in the audience um, mentioned in front of him that there was a, the great scholar Anwar Shah Kashmiri, he was a great muhaddith of, of India, And they kind of criticized him. They said that he left Hanafiya. He has ceased being Hanafi. Abdul Fattah Abu Huda was very surprised. And he asked, why do you say that? So this person said, because on this issue of a husband being away for the woman, I don't remember the exact issue, that he took the view of Imam Malik rather than the view of Abu Hanifa. So he said he remembers what Sheikh Abdul Fattah Abu Huda said to him. He said some wise words. He said, look, uh, Hanafism is not all of Islam, but Hanafi madhab is part of Islam. It's not Islam, all of it. So it's not that, you know, uh, everything in Islam is there. So don't excommunicate anyone based on these issues. And he said, basically, we need tolerance. All these imams, there were great imams, and they gave their opinions based on the evidences. And he said, if any of them suppose were wrong, Allah is going to still reward them. And if any of them were right, they're going to get two rewards. So he said, this is a time of unity. All these differences many times are being fostered upon us by our enemies who want us to be fighting each other and to divide our strength uh, and, our, and our unity. The question was about the field in hadith known as Asma'ul Rijal, which is the knowledge of the narrators. So how, what's the best way of learning that? And well, the Shaykh mentioned that this is the only field, one of the few fields that the books are exclusively in Arabic. They've never been translated even in Urdu, not even in English, obviously. 
So you have to learn Arabic and you mentioned a number of books to study. It's an important science. Um, the last question I'll ask, I have a question in the last question. Some people have asked me, the book of 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 the book. وہ آپ کے رشتے دار تھے آپ کو جانتے ہیں ماموں حقیقی ماموں دار بھائی سے میرے ماموں کے لڑکے سے وہ اور میرے شاگرد سے میں نے ان کو پڑھایا ہے اور میرے ماموں کے لڑکے سے اور کیا کہتے ہیں کہ یہ کتاب جب راہدار میں اسلامی سے یہ اعلان ہوا کہ سیرت کو کتابی کی جائے اس کے لئے ایسا اعلان ہے تو سب سے پہلے انہوں نے ان سے مشورہ کیا ان سے جہاں تک ہوتا تھا میں نے ان کی رنوائی کی Okay, the question was, uh, I get this a lot the last couple of days. Everyone knows the book, Rahik al Maftum, the Sira book. And the author is Safir Rahman Mubarak Puri. So everyone's asking, is that him or is he related to him? So um, I'm very bad with relations in Urdu. So Mamuzad Bai is cousin, I guess. Is it cousin? Okay. Mamuz's son. Yeah. So his, his, his mother's brother's son. So his cousin. So Safir Rahman Mubarak Puri was his uh, cousin. And he was also a student. He studied under him. So he was his teacher. Safir Rahman was a student of our guest, Sheikh Abdul Rahman. And he said he consulted him heavily while writing the book. And he said he was a brilliant guy. He was genius. Um, and he uh, basically authored this amazing book. Um, and there's some criticism that some people say that he took parts of the book from others. He said that's not true. Uh, the entire work is his, and he did a lot of research for this particular book. Final advice was amazing. He's talking about unity. And he said, um, people are asking about unity a lot. What's the basis of unity? He said, the basis of unity is the Prophet ﷺ told us, it's amrain, two matters. You hold on to these two matters and you'll be successful. And that is the Qur'an and the Sunnah. The Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He said everything else, that's an ishtihadi matter. He said, although it's important, we shouldn't emphasize it so much. It's, uh, you know, we have differences of views, there's nothing wrong with that. But he said our focus should always be Qur'an and Sunnah, that's how we'll be united. If we focus on our differences, we cannot be united. So he said, for a practical perspective, everyone, everyone cannot have knowledge of every matter and solve every problem. So you just find a scholar that you trust and you follow him. Any scholar that you feel is the right one or he, you feel 
you trust in his knowledge, you follow him because Allah will ask you about your practice. But the bottom line is your practice. What are you doing in your own life? Not about solving the problems of the world or everyone's views, but about your own personal life. So wonderful words of advice, an excellent way to close. And with that, we'll ask uh, Shaykh Sahib to make small dua, and then we'll end inshallah. Thank you.